What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. A podcast all about couples. And the things they go through. Today, we have Dr. May Hughes and her lovely husband, Casey Hughes. I'm really excited about this one because Casey and I have known each other for 11 years. And then he got married to his wife, Dr. May Hughes, right here. I'm talking about you in third person. <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm so excited about today's topic because it's all about how to stay healthy during pregnancy mm -hmm. and how to move in a in a healthy way during pregnancy. And we're very excited because this week, as we allude to, May is launching a course that you can find out more about down below that gives you day-by-day -day exercises if you're pregnant. Um, and it's super helpful. She does educational uh, content. She also breaks it down by trimesters. And literally there's four days a week. You can you can see the workouts and go through them. Um, super reasonably priced. You can buy it per, based off the trimester you're in. And I think it's over just like around a dollar a day, which is awesome. And uh, today we're just going to be sitting down, picking our brain with the questions that have been submitted by the audience. So should we just jump right into it? Let's do it. This is Casey and Kara May. Um, um, keep the mic close to your <laughs> mouth, dude. Oh, I yeah. you've been oh, here before. You close pressed the live man. button before we even told them what we're doing. I realize or... that now. Well, usually there's like a step in between, but yeah. we're just hitting it. Um, if you guys have close. been with us on Instagram, <laughs> Dr. May, we've been doing a workshop about pelvic floor and pregnancy and postpartum. This is her lovely husband, Casey. Casey and Andrew are bros. Um, they lived together for like five years. Regrettably. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so today we have a true expert in her field, Kara May, Dr. Kara May Hughes. Uh, she's going to talk to us about the uh, kind of pregnancy movement, movement during pregnancy, pelvic floor. And then we also have Casey. Um, An expert. <laughs> 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 yeah. So that's it. It's going to be a pretty lopsided conversation, but I'm excited. Yes. If you guys have any questions for them um, or pr like, Questions about pregnancy, postpartum, pelvic floor, please put them in the comments. And we have Caroline and Lexi, who look very confused behind the camera, which is scary. Are we all good? Great. <laughs> and they will <laughs> fill us in on what your questions are. Awesome. So, hi, guys. This is quite the rude awakening of just, like, jumping into I this. know. I was like, oh, okay. All right. Relax. Yeah. Also, Andrew, you're going to keep confusing people. My name is, I go by May. Yeah, Kara May. <laughs> Gosh dang it. Yeah, I did say Kara May. <laughs> What'd you the, call? I'm the only person on the planet that calls her Kara I May. think you are. Yeah, you confuse me. I know. Because so I've, I've been saying her. Dr. May forever. <laughs> in yes. May. And, and I then go all by of a sudden May. I just introduced you as Kara May. All right. Uh, I just won't talk the rest of the interview. That's, that's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for the best. Okay. <laughs> <right>. To start, <laughs> to give you guys at least a little bit to talk about before we get into pregnancy, um, please share with people how you guys know each other and your whole bromance here. How long have we known each other? 11 years? Yeah. You got to Vandy 2011. Yeah. 11 years. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So, fun fact, There's you no were actually on our first date. Yes. Oh, yes. my. I actually picked Sean up in your in truck. truck. Yes, because oh he was too gosh, embarrassed to pick me up in his car. Wait, wow. what was your car, Andrew? The Ford Flex. The little, like, the blo the little box Don't talk thing. about it like that, <laughs> yes. dude. So, don't he picked me up in it. Casey's truck, but he never told me it was your truck. Oh, my gosh. He was trying to show off. He that. never even told me it was his truck. Chevy I just Silverado. obviously assumed. Yeah. <laughs> oh and then gosh. it was like the next day, he's like, here, bro. And he like, <laughs> handed your keys back. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I didn't even know that story. Yeah. That, yeah. That was at that that little uh, little crummy apartment we had during the summer, right? Yeah. We were all staying together the TV there. Were two of you box. living on like blow up Carrie air mattresses? and I were uh, on a blow up mattress. Yeah. It, yeah together. <laughs> just on the floor. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised you still wanted to hang around after seeing yeah. all that. Well, it's been fun to see you grow through the phases of like, all right, you showed up at Vandy, uh, then you get married to Dr. May, way out kicked your coverage, mm -hmm. way, way out kicked your coverage. And then now you have a you have a kid. We all have kids. A yes. little girl. A little, little baby girl. It is crazy. And we didn't, I mean, we knew each other at, at Vandy, but uh, didn't start dating or anything till. Gosh, I guess it was like three, three years, years after yeah. Andy. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I used, she has a, she had a dog, Monroe, uh, <laughs> that I used to kind of sneak my way in there because uh, I'm really good with dogs. And I he was is. like, if I can win over Row, maybe I can win over May as well. Wow. So that was I do have to say, worked. knowing both of you for so long, and when this finally happened, everybody was like, yeah. This makes sense. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone. Why didn't this happen a lot sooner? So many people are like, yeah. finally. <laughs> yeah. Can That's you okay. explain to everybody listening what it is you do? Yes. 
So I am a physical therapist first, and then I specialize in pelvic floor physical therapy. So pretty much what I do is I help women go through pregnancy, postpartum, like any sort of pelvic floor pain issues that they're having. Um, it doesn't always have to be pregnancy and postpartum. But that's usually where those issues arise. But I definitely work with patients who've never even had a child. Before we get into that, you do you still train? Like no. as a trainer, not anymore. No. Okay. So yeah, I I played football. Yeah. With Andrew, and then I was a computer science major, and yep. both of those were like a full time job. So I yep. I was burnt out, and so I went to personal training right after school, and then that burnt me out because <laughs> the hours are crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah, I did that just for probably about a year and a half. Okay. Years. Yeah. I was gonna say so before get in we get into like pelvic floor therapy. What's the biggest difference as a trainer you see in people who don't work out and people who do work out? I, w- I will say, I mean, one from my own personal uh, frame of reference, whenever I stop moving, my body falls apart. <laughs> <laughs> it is like it has to keep moving. And um, and I, I see that, you know, when I was training, my clients were the same way. Um, when they stop moving, that's when issues would happen. And I think... So often it's, you know, with in pregnancy, you stop moving because you don't feel great. And um, and that's when your body starts to deteriorate. You, you really got to keep moving to. Such harsh words. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I will say, though, I feel like the biggest misconception is the reverse. Yes. People think that if they work out, they're going to like be in pain and their body's going to d- deteriorate faster when it's like actually the reverse. Complete opposite. And I think, you know, the, the other side of that is, like, sleep's really important, too, right? You have to get your rest, but but if your body's not moving, it's there's so much in there that that doesn't work right. Yeah. It just stops, stops coordinating right, and your muscles with your bones and everything, it just kind of goes kaput. Yeah. <laughs> kaput. How's our audio levels? Is everyone able to hear us? Yes. Yes. Good. Yeah. Do I need to get closer? Great. No, no, I'm just making sure. <laughs> Are there like Casey's glitches right we need here. to fix? Casey's We're right good? Here. Anything along those lines? Great. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So then when it comes to pelvic floor, what's the biggest difference you see between women who don't work on like their base foundational strength mm-hmm. in pelvic floor and those who do? Definitely. It's kind of the same thing. A lot of just pain that maybe like stretch for a little bit and get temporary relief but it's never long term so a lot of low back and hip pain is super super common in pelvic floor dysfunctions Um, and then especially during pregnancy and postpartum women who have trouble holding in any sort of like leakage when they're running (laughs) or jumping or anything like that that's a huge thing for guys if you didn't know this this happens Yes. Yeah. You guys are like, mm, cool. oh, why I, do you think I we wear black leggings? <laughs> yeah, always. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for years. <laughs> yeah. Casey's like, I know so much more about the female pelvic floor than uh, I ever wanted yeah. to know. It has been an eye-opening experience for yeah. sure. Um, there was, I remember way back when you were first kind of diving into that, uh-huh. you had ordered a bunch of um, accoutrement to, you know, that you use for <laughs> pelvic floor therapy like things called a pelvic wand and yes i walked downstairs on our dinner table <laughs> there's just all these pelvic wands and this skeleton of a pelvis and i'm like what is going on right now yeah <laughs> yep you that you're true. taking a freaky step in your relationship yes. that's yeah. definitely he's <laughs> yeah. like mm, what is this uh-huh. <laughs> uh, i didn't know you knew words as big as accoutrement that's pretty impressive <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of you guys. <laughs> Uh, I do remember when Sean was pregnant with Jet. Yeah. Uh, we called May. I don't think you never actually got to pelvic floor therapy. No. I was, but by the time I her. asked for help, though, I was like a week before my due date. <laughs> I remember that. And then, yeah. Then I just asked her a million questions <laughs> the next day and then had Jet. As does, uh, you mentioned this the other day, but whenever we have game night, May is always like. May is the hot commodity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every single one of our friends is either like, Pregnant, trying to get pregnant, or just had a baby. And every woman just gravitates towards May. And they're like, "Um, what do I do about this? Can I fix this? Can I, like, all the questions in the world. Like, I found out the other night, I had no idea. You can actually, like, fix your C-section scar. Yeah. I thought you just lived with it. 
And you she like was star like, massage, yeah. Didn't know that. <laughs> I kind of yeah. just want to give May, May the floor and just okay. Like, well, are you asking questions? No, you got it. You got it. She's got all the questions. Okay. I got a lot <laughs> of questions. Okay. Any, you can both chime in. I, I don't know Not how much. Not an expert. <laughs> don't do <laughs> <it>. <laughs> okay. You might know enough <laughs> after listening to me yes. all this time. Um, let's start with best diastasis recti exercises. Yes. Wow. And what is diastasis? Really? Okay. These. This is the part diastasis we... is pretty much like your big six pack abs that sit in front. It's when they start to separate a little bit, but it's very common and normal during the end of pregnancy because your baby has to grow somewhere. But postpartum, if they don't necessarily start working together again, that's when it becomes an issue. Um, baseline, I just have everyone do like diaphragmatic breathing pretty much and learning how to actually contract your core with your pelvic floor. So a lot of like on all fours, like trying to breathe and bring your belly up and in. Um, I feel like I show a lot of this mm -hmm. on my Instagram page and I, there's a video of it in the program. So also you know. her Instagram page is Dr. May Hughes. Yeah. Not Dr. Kara May Hughes. Yes. Yeah. Dr. May Hughes. <laughs> um, all your highlights and stuff are amazing. I was telling her I went down a very deep, dark black hole. <laughs> One day, and I watched everything you've ever posted, and it's amazing. Thank you. I learned so much. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm in my first trimester. This is from Marg. I'm not going to try to say that. So from someone. I'm in my first trimester. What are some of the best exercises I can do to prepare for birth? In the first trimester, there's not necessarily a huge focus on having to modify everything because... You can still, you're not usually super large yet. And so you can maintain your body the way that you want to while you're working out. Um, but definitely like that diaphragmatic breathing, learning how to contract your pelvic floor and your deep core because it gets harder later on during pregnancy. Like as your belly's really big, it feels really hard to like figure out what muscle is working where. Mm -hmm. um, so those are probably going to be things I would have people start doing in the first trimester. Okay. This one is a word I do not know. Okay. Couldn't even begin to know. Does a bicornate mm. a uterus affect your pelvic floor? So they're talking about like uterus, like different shapes and sizes and stuff like that. Okay. Um, it can. I mean, <laughs> had no they idea. Come in different shapes. <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> it, Evidently. I mean, it can, but usually not as much because the pelvic floor muscles sit like a little hammock and your uterus sits on top of it so it's not their uterus isn't necessarily like attached to the pelvic floor so it doesn't affect it as much as people would think this one uh is sad so mrs bullfy i'm very sorry she said two stillbirths in six months um emotionally broken my lower back has also been broken what can i do for that i'm so sorry yeah. um it's still even with you know, having a stillbirth, it's definitely still your body goes through all those changes that it would with a pregnancy that didn't result in a stillbirth. So the first thing that I would recommend is definitely reach out to a pelvic floor physical therapist, even if it's just to spend that first hour like talking with someone about it. Honestly, I spend a lot of time talking with my patients, going through things with them. So I would definitely start there. Um, it Just your body probably is holding a lot of tension. And that can result in a lot of low back pain as well. So I would definitely start by reaching out to someone in the pelvic floor PT world. And then does pelvic floor therapy help with endo endometriosis pain? Yes, this is another one that's super common, like up and coming. I, not up and coming, but like people are starting to realize endometriosis is something you can at least work on. Um, mainly because there's a lot of pelvic pain associated with endometriosis. That's when like uterus like or endometrial like cells are outside of the uterus. Um, and so just learning certain ways to manage the pelvic pain that usually occurs right around your period. Um, it's been super helpful for some women. About a hundred more just <laughs> came in. Okay. <laughs> so you might have to interpret what they're asking. Okay. Um, can your pelvic bone expand? I had a C-section because the baby was hitting my pelvic bone. Interesting. So you, if they're talking about like the front of your mm -hmm. pelvis, so your pelvic, like your pubic bone is not actually 
one bone it's two together and so you have a little bit of like cartilage that goes between the two and so yeah when you are pregnant it does expand a little bit that happens with all the bones in your body with um cartilage because you have more elasticity so it definitely expands in order for your baby to be able to descend um but i'm not sure as to how that would yeah result in a c-section okay just for emphasis can you because this is amazing to me rehash the benefits of a structured movement plan during pregnancy as far as how that affects what your pregnancy is like, what delivery is like, and what recovery is like. Yes. During pregnancy, <laughs> it's really a time where you say you were someone who either didn't work out or you worked out a lot, like a lot of hit running and jumping. It's kind of a time where you want to slow down a little bit and really just focus on strength training because that elasticity in your tissues makes everything like really loosey goosey and you really need your muscles to start stabilizing throughout your body. And there's definitely certain areas that you want to focus on more during pregnancy because postural changes, um, I mean, your belly's growing out and forward. So there's a lot more, um, tension on like the muscles of your back and your glutes and things like that. So it's not just a regular training program you'd want to do. You want to do one specifically for the areas that you're going to need to get stronger to carry you through pregnancy. And then the first workshop we did on Monday, which you can still have access to. Yeah. We'll link that down below. Yep. yep. Um, we talked about the most, like, the biggest misconceptions or myths. Mm -hmm. So the first one is that you're, when you get pregnant, you should stop working out. Yes, definitely a myth. A myth. Keep working out. <laughs> and then even further than that, a lot of people think you can't lift weight when you get pregnant because it will affect the baby or jeopardize mm -hmm. the pregnancy. And that's definitely also a myth. I talk about this a lot. ACOG, it's called the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and they redid all of their ex um, pregnancy exercise guidelines and they now support like aerobic with training, which is like walking, running and strength training and anaerobic training, which is more like running and things like that, like higher intensity. And they pretty much realize none of these negatively impact your baby. In fact, getting blood flow to your muscles and to your baby is a good thing. And then even further with the working out, one of the biggest misconceptions is that you have to keep your heart rate. And I looked this up. Keep your heart rate under 120 beats yeah. per minute. Though there's like so many ranges out there, yeah. like different articles will say different things, but yeah, that's definitely not true anymore because your heart rate naturally increases when you're pregnant anyways. So think about it. Like if you normally, your heart rate's like 50 and then you work out, it's like 120. Mm -hmm. Well, if you start at a higher level, just during pregnancy, your heart rate raises, say you start out at 60, well then naturally you're going to get to above 120 because you're just starting out at a higher level. And then I think another misconception was that any. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm literally just, I'm sitting here like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> you guys get it. Um, another misconception is any type of core work would cause diastasis recti. Yes. It, diastasis recti is not like during pregnancy. It's something that's going to happen in order for your baby to grow. It's completely normal. It's just postpartum. That if you do, if you kind of progress too soon or you haven't learned to manage the pressure in your abdomen, then it can be problematic, diastasis. But yeah, during pregnancy, it's normal for your abs to separate so the baby can grow. Um, Wait, can you what he? But you need, yeah. to, you need to watch out for coning, correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Casey. Yeah. So an exercise. Would be <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was yeah. my contribution. I am curious. Okay, so. You were with May every day of the pregnancy, give or take, right? Yes. What was her routine like? I'm curious. I mean, you, uh, you, we started to work out together. Mm -hmm. So I work out every morning at like five because that's the best time for me. Can't tell. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and you started to, I, I don't know when, was that? I tried course? to do the morning thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, you know, then it becomes workout when you can and when you're feeling yeah. good because but there's uh, no such thing as routine during pregnancy. Yeah. Yeah. No. And also, I mean, you, she was seeing patients, you know, all throughout the day. I mean, starting at seven, going till 
six at night at mm-hmm. times. So I would do it during like my lunch break mm-hmm. often. And then, yeah, and then I I worked remote, so cook us dinner. She'd come home. She'd do some of the the movement, the breathing stuff. Um, she'd like be kind of inverted on, on our yeah. little our little sofa thing uh. <laughs> at night. Ro would be scurrying over trying to lick her while she was doing it and stuff. But uh, but yeah, that was that was kind of the routine. I just remember hearing you talk about how diligent she was in doing all of the things like Mm -hmm. to help everything go smoothly. Mm -hmm. And like, I think there's also a big emphasis. Like she wanted to bring this out Mm -hmm. to her patients. And, uh, and so going through it at that same time and being like, I want to not just program this, but actually use it, Mm -hmm. uh, I think was a big thing. So staying diligent and like making sure she hits all those workouts was Mm -hmm. big. You feel like it worked? Yeah, (laughs) I got to have my baby without being like a big goal of mine, which is not necessarily a goal for everyone. But just me personally was I wanted to go into labor on my own. Yeah. And that's something that I was able to do even on the time clock. Like my water broke and I had to go into the hospital early and I wasn't technically in labor yet, but I was able to get myself into labor. Um, And what people don't realize is that there are certain movements that you can do during pregnancy to actually help your baby descend into the pelvis which is what triggers labor like the pressure of your baby down in your uterus and then also pressing down your pelvic floor triggers labor so doing all of those movements on my own Casey would be like make sure you're like get on that ball or like you know yeah. certain exercises Go down whatever it's called <laughs> <laughs> it's like you haven't done those today I'm like yeah I know okay I'm gonna do wow. them but you're good about getting me to stay on track and not just like you said like not just program it for people but actually do it for myself mm-hmm. so uh, a question from a few different people is so like time commitment wise if mm-hmm. you this person says they have like three kids and they're going into their fourth pregnancy they just don't feel like they have time to work out at a mm-hmm. gym are there movements and within this program ways to do the program at home if you don't have equipment if you're just working in a nursery or stay yeah. at home mom there's definitely I mean I try to make the whole thing super easy to do at home pretty much all you need is dumbbells and some of those like elastic bands um but even if you don't have dumbbells you can get very creative I work with my patients a lot I'll be like throw some books in a backpack or your diaper bag and wear that you can get um a little baby carrier and like wear one of your babies so there's definitely ways to add weight to do some strength training but yeah that was a huge thing for me is I didn't always feel like also doing like 60 minute workouts so I try to make everything around like 30 minutes things that you can easily do at home or in the gym if you want to and go to the gym but it's time so this is this is an exciting week because you have your anniversary or was that last week last week week. yeah her birthday was on Monday birthday was on Monday birthday and then the, for the past couple of years, you've been working hands-on with patients. Yes. Mostly this uh, crowd who's pregnant, some of those who are older, as we were discussing er- older uh, earlier. <laughs> but you're also coming out with a online course mm-hmm. uh, that I think is like it costs maybe just a, around a dollar a day, um, and people can get your expertise and do the exercises at home. Yes. That's pretty exciting. I'm so excited because it's just something I get so many messages like in on my Instagram about people wanting specific workouts or like what should I do for X, Y, and Z or I just don't even know where to start. Like that's Mm -hmm. honestly what I get a lot is I'm pregnant. I want to work out, but I don't even know where to start and I can't, you know, spend like hours with every single person. So being able to make this course to at least give people somewhere to start and you Mm -hmm. follow it throughout your entire pregnancy, it's. I just feel like I can reach so many more people and help so many more people rather than, you know, trying to answer. I try and answer so many of my messages, but it's, mm-hmm. it's hard sometimes. Well, it is great. I mean, you can, this 1,200 comments in 20 minutes yeah. testifies to the fact yeah. that there's a lot of confusion, a lot of questions around this topic. And for people to just have a go-to source in you to like point to and, and guide them through the whole process is extremely valuable. And so you've structured it with an educational st- point where you go through what happens to your pot- body during pregnancy. Which is also the best. I, like, I read all the books, and none of it made sense, like, when you broke <laughs> it down. I was like, oh, okay. That like, makes sense. I feel like books tell you eat dates. 
and yeah. do this. But they don't explain, like, what's actually happening to your body. Right. And why you should be doing X, Y, and Z. And when you, <laughs> I remember when you were filming, I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. And I have two kids already, and I didn't know. Yeah. No, that was super important for me is including the educational component because sometimes you'll see these like pregnancy or postpartum guides that are produced by people but you're like okay but why am I doing these exercises mm -hmm. so that part was really important for me coming as a physical therapist like I educate people all day long so that's mm -hmm. what I really wanted to include in this program not just here are some exercises but here are exercises and here are why you're doing these specific ones and on top of the education you have workouts four days a week starting week five, going all the way through week 40 of pregnancy. 41. 41. 41. If you, if for some <laughs> reason you're at 41, mainly because I was expecting yeah. to go to 41 because usually the first one you're super late. Yeah. I went 40. I went, we went 42. Yeah. But true. You wow. can. Mm. It's, it's totally normal. Um, but yeah, that's why I created it too. It's like, Take you all the way through. Now, granted, you're doing a lot different things at week 41 than you are <laughs> at yeah. week five. Yeah. But that's also why I wanted to create it, too, is that the exercises change as mm -hmm. you're going through each stage of pregnancy. And the coolest part, coincidentally, is you filmed all this while you were, like, 30-some weeks pregnant. Yep. <laughs> Which yep, was incredible. I filmed it while I was pregnant. So it's, it's <laughs> not like, a oh, if you're pregnant, modify it like this. Like, you actually modified it exactly how. Like Awesome. Yep. A very pregnant woman with. <laughs> yeah. And Casey, to, to May's credit, I don't think I heard a single uh or um during the filming of it. And she's, she blamed you for that. Like, do you, you, you hold her accountable to that? Blamed me for that. <laughs> I mean, I credit it, credit it. <laughs> he speaks very well. And you are very thoughtful with the way that you speak and you think about things before it comes out. And I hardly hear an um or uh for you. You you do a very good job. So I will say, though, in front of a camera, she is far, far better than me. <laughs> I like writing things down because then I have time. When mm -hmm. I'm like spotlight, that is that is not. So today, <laughs> us jumping directly into the live yeah. stream was yeah. without any exactly <laughs> yeah, <doing>. at all. <laughs> <laughs> the microphone's out uh, here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, going? Casey. So you guys are married. You have a baby. What's the coolest thing you've learned about your wife through this whole process mm. so i'm intrigued yeah may is something that attracted me to her is just how driven she is she, i've always seen that she's like she's laser focused on things and she has a strength that i've always i've always like really admired but with ava there's been a softness that's come out mm. that <laughs> has amazed me. So. Oh. You make me cry. <laughs> Casey might be tearing up. I am Casey oh. tearing up. <laughs> I, I was going to ask you a second I question, but I don't know <laughs> if I should. No, you're good. Oh, I've never seen him actually produce a tear. This is usually <laughs> the closest he gets. It's like a little watering of the eyes. So I was going to say, what's your favorite thing about being a dad? <laughs> I know. Yeah, so I was like, I don't know definitely. if I should ask this question. I did cry in the men's group when I, I was talking about Ava. Yeah. Oh. yeah. But I know right now it's the it's the little noises, it's the hands making all their little mm -hmm. <laughs> movements. Um, I don't feel like I'm the primary, you know, person right now because mm -hmm. I can't produce milk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I'm there to try to support mom With as much things, as possible. Huh? You can't. Right. Oh, With that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know. My mind goes always goes to a couple of years in advance. Like, what am I going to be teaching her? Making sure, and then I got to stop and be like, no. First, I'm changing a diaper. Like, let's focus on that. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah. I mean, as tired and as frustrated as you can get sometimes, then she'll. Do a little smile, and you're like, oh, oh <laughs> you're perfect. So cute. Um, okay, so you guys have a wedding this weekend? Yes. yes. Is it, mm -hmm. are you close with the groom or the bride? It's my cousin, so she's like my sister. Okay. Yes. Is this the first wedding you've been to since you had Ava? It is, and she's coming. Uh. I was going to say, we went to one of our first weddings since having kids, and we both bawled because the mother oh son danced and the mm. father daughter dance we were a disaster we were an actual disaster Just and hearing like the, the parents yeah, get absolutely. up and talk about their babies 
and how like they've prayed for their spouses and oh my gosh we bawled yeah, yeah like a baby i'm excited to i get already cry at weddings oh yeah get ready it's gonna be worse <laughs> we've had that conversation already like just mention it we'll be like you know someday she's gonna you know she's gonna be an actual adult yeah. and like you know marry someone yeah. <laughs> it's like a big deal yeah. but it's so funny because i don't know how much like this you were but casey you were all in on dogs bro mm -hmm. and i don't even know like the the thought of a kid yeah. maybe didn't even excite you as much as as dogs did because you, you i wanted to fawn same here them. <laughs> yeah i remember okay. you had business still does still does <laughs> <laughs> muscles and mutts that's it. how has that changed or like because your love for dogs hasn't decreased no, and I made sure to tell Ro, you okay. know, almost every day of the pregnancy that my my love wasn't going to change; it was just going to yeah. grow. So she, I want her to know that. But, wow. Um, I mean, I think other people realize it because I just don't mention Ro as much, which oh, is yeah. sad. But I, I mean, yeah. you know, you you have a a little baby in front yeah. of you, and it's part of us. Um, and that's just. There's no substitute for that. But my, she looks just like Casey, so. Yes. My biggest fear with kids was, this makes me sound crazy, but I was afraid I couldn't love a human being as much as I loved my dog. Doesn't sound crazy to me. I was <laughs> yeah. worried about the same yeah. thing. <laughs> I will never forget. You'll laugh at this. Um, early on when we were dating, we had this big philosophical debate, Andrew and I, while we were dating. Don't bring it we up. Were, don't bring it up. No, <laughs> no, I have to bring it up because Casey's here. But it was almost a deal breaker for our relationship because oh he gosh. said, okay, burning building, dog or human. And I was like, this is, you can't ask me this question. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I think I've had the same argument. He almost again. broke up with me. Yeah. I was like, I will figure out a way. Okay. But that dog is being saved. Here's we we literally talked about this the other day, and Casey says, I will die in that burning building yes. trying to rescue you, <laughs> Ava, and Monroe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I said, I'll man. grab Ava, carry her out, but Ro only has paws. Yes. <laughs> <So. laughs> yeah. Today's show is brought to you by Modern Fertility. Modern Fertility has been a huge part of our journey and is someone that we lean on for information about fertility on the regular. Honestly, I feel like getting information about your fertility, Sean, has been super helpful for both of us. And Modern Fertility gives you insights to your body and helps you make decisions about growing your family, which we're all about. Yes, and honestly, that's why Modern Fertility was created. This company is incredible. It's easy and affordable, and it's a way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick. Mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results within 10 days. Traditional testing with your doctor can cost over $1,000, but Modern Fertility gives you the same information at only $159, which is a fraction of the price. And if you go to modernfertility.com slash eastfam, you can get an extra $20 off your test. And right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash eastfam. That means your test will cost $139 instead of hundreds or thousands it could cost at a doctor's office. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash eastfam. That's modernfertility.com slash E-I-S-T-F-A-M. We'll also link it down below. Let's get back to it. <laughs> so here's what's cool. The dog definitely gets slightly neglected in the first couple months. Mm -hmm. But then now Drew's two and a half. I just took this this afternoon. Aww. He gets more love yeah. now, Nash does, because he's Nash got two so little sweet. ones. Also, he eats like a king. Because <laughs> yeah. the, oh, my gosh. So yeah. We keep waiting on that because Ro is very food motivated. And uh, and we know that once Ava starts eating some real food, oh, yeah. best friends. Yeah, the second the high chair comes out, Nash parks up, starts running laps, <laughs> and he just sits right there. And they have figured out how to, one, feed him. <laughs> And two, Nash has figured out how to clean up all the scrappings, which is, <laughs> yep. yeah. It's definitely going to be bro. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious, May. So you, as, as Casey alluded to, uh, very driven, very ambitious. You got your doctorate degree. You're uh, hands-on with a ton of patients. You're doing this course. How has Ava changed your relationship with mm. all that? With that? With your ambition? I would say it's definitely very difficult because I want to still do it all. But, I mean, like, today I was working on something, and I could just hear her, like, I just fed her, and she was, like, starting to cry a little bit, and I just wanted to, like, put her in one of those, like, little swings yeah. and keep working. I was like, no, like, I'm going to get down on the ground. We're going to do tummy time. Mm -hmm. We're going to play because she's only going to be this young for so long. 
Mm-hmm. So it definitely, I mean, I want to do it all, but I would say it's getting easier for me to put things down. It was it was hard. Yeah, it's getting a lot easier now because yeah. I just think about her growing up. Does Does Ava have a, a workout routine already? Because <laughs> Drew's my between the two part. of you. <laughs> <laughs> tummy time, fifteen tummy minutes, time. five oh. times a day. Um, I I do count how many times we do tummy <laughs> yes. time. Yes, I'm a very regimented person. Oh, okay. I try to make her do little squats every now and then. <laughs> yeah, and her her legs kind of curve in still. Yeah. But I, yeah. I, I fix them out. <laughs> Uh, who's more regimented, you or Casey? That's a good question. You Different know. aspects of our life, I think. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah. I don't know. I feel like you. I don't know. I think you're more like routine, like the same thing at the same time every day. Whereas I could be more like regimented in terms of not being able to like put down a project or my work or something like that. Mm-hmm. You're like forced. 50 a.m., that alarm goes off. He works out. Except oh, no. on the day he missed men's group. Mm. <laughs> I would be like, uh, I'm going to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to sleep. That's what I usually do. Like, yeah. the night before, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I'll come with you. And then, no. That alarm goes off. I'm like, mm, I'm not coming with you. Yeah. <laughs> you want to get back to some questions? Because I have um, some. This is from the live chat. So, is it true that there's nothing to be done? Sorry. Nothing to be done about pelvic floor damage from a previous pregnancy during a current pregnancy. So, sorry, if she had pelvic floor damage during a first pregnancy, is there anything she can do to help the second and third pregnancies? Yes, they're definitely, it's never too late. It's just like any muscle in your body. It's never too late to heal it. If she's talking about damage, like maybe like scar tissue or tearing or things like that, you can definitely still work on that during pregnancy. Um, It's completely safe to work with a pelvic floor PT during pregnancy. So it's definitely something you can still do and I highly recommend it that way you recover better postpartum after second Mm -hmm. third baby awesome that question was from Melody Ingram who's very excited that we're talking about this Mm -hmm. uh Steph said asks if you don't heal diastasis recti before getting pregnant again will it be harder to heal after this after this second pregnancy yeah it definitely will be um more difficult because those muscles haven't like the two halves of your ab muscle haven't been working together for a little bit and then you add the stretch of another pregnancy and it definitely becomes more difficult but it's not impossible but it usually you're kind of working from more of an uphill battle awesome christy s in iowa mm-hmm. asks um let's see nope that's just a story okay uh <laughs> <laughs> um Michaela is terrified that she may have trouble conceiving during uh, due to irregular cycles. Is there any prenatal uh, exercises or anything prenatal you could recommend while trying? Is that question pertain? Is that relevant to you? Uh, I would say that's more of like a fertility specialist. Oh, sure. Yeah, there are some pelvic floor therapists who specialize it, who specialize in like hormones and fertility, but I do not, so I I wouldn't want to. Gotcha. Lead someone astray. <laughs> I think. We should just tell them about the course and. That, okay, I love that. Yeah, um, just like let's jump in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just like I'm really excited. Um, wait, okay, first one. You're on Couple Things podcast, so we have to ask you the same question before we wrap up. Okay, so you guys have been married two years. You have a baby. Dated how long? <laughs> we moved really fast. Nine so we, months. but we were friends <laughs> for oh, like since my freshman. We've heard year a lot less. Then. Don't worry. Yes. Yeah, we've heard. The, I think the quickest, like, marriage we've heard on our podcast is three months. Like, started dating and married in three months. Oh, and married. Oh, and they've been on. married years. Like, amazing. 11 years. Oh, you know. So yeah. So, we started dating in October 2019, and I proposed in July. Of, amazing. Yeah. October 2018. And then 18. it turned yeah. 19. And then yeah. 19. Nice, bro. Year behind. Nice, nice, Okay, nice. so in <laughs> this time, this phase of life, what is the best piece of advice you have either been given or would give about relationships? I always thought like this was a cheesy piece of advice that people gave, but especially right now with a almost Mm -hmm. eight week old, it really holds true is like the taking time to still like Mm -hmm. date each other Mm -hmm. because it does not feel like that at all right now. Mm -hmm. So it definitely... I always thought that was really piece of cheesy advice. I'm like, well, of course you're going to like still go out on days and stuff like that. But 
I definitely, that one rings true now. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Um, <laughs> I, I'm trying to think. I mean, there are some things that that my dad told me in preparation for, like, marriage that were important to me. But um, as far as, like, actually while you're married, uh, I think remembering that it's marriage can be a negotiation. There's a lot of compromise that's going to happen on both sides um and just to clearly communicate that so that there's nothing left no ambiguity ambiguity that's out there um in in which direction you're going because it's got to be kind of going in the same direction helping each other out on the way i'm actually curious since both of you have described yourself as uh like rigid (laughs) how has the baby i mean that's a they call it a baby bomb right like interruption to normal schedules. Mm-hmm. Have you been dealing with that well? I think I kind of am now. There is still part of me that wants her to sleep at the same time. <laughs> like I get upset. Like one night she slept six hours and I was like, this is amazing. We got it. And then the other night she woke up four times in the middle of the night. I was like, what on earth? I thought I had a schedule down. Yeah. So I guess that's where I was saying the difference in like we're regimenting different things. And for me, like – May's much more of a rule follower, and mm-hmm. she she find you know you go through different programs and looking at that and being like this is the schedule we should follow, um, whereas I'm kind of like oh they'll figure it out on the way, and I think you need both of those because it's definitely going to help Ava be on a schedule if we try to get her down at the same time, but also you can't feel like you're losing the battle if it doesn't happen every day, um, so. I think having both of those sides has really helped yeah. work that schedule into something that's a little more fluid, but we're, we're trying to get on a, a bit of a discipline. You guys sound like us. We're the same <laughs> way. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's 7.01. She should have been in bed by now. Yep. And Andrew's like, she's fine. <laughs> She's I don't want to be like Andrew. Yeah. I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> Please re- rescind the, co- the comparison. Well, anyways, thank you guys so much for being on the show. May, we're so excited for this course. Comes so out excited. tomorrow. Yeah. So, yeah, for those listening, we'll link the information down below. Uh, course uh, that Dr. May put together. She's an expert, as you might you know, as we've all figured out. As you've all <laughs> been aware of, but also, you know, she's got doctor in front of her name. Pretty impressive. Um, again, priced it, I think just over maybe around a dollar a day. Yeah. Weeks five to 41 in pregnancy. Uh, and it's got all the education, all the movements, literally day by day exercises that you can check out. Um, and we're very excited for you. So congrats on a big Thank week. You. May. It congrats. does feel like a very big week. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll link the information down below and Casey, it's a pleasure. Thanks for just sitting there, man. <laughs> I was gonna say thanks for, all yours. thanks for sitting there and looking good, but you don't do that. Either, so all just sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you went sliding earlier. I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, it's Andrew. And Sean. Just want to say congratulations on making it through that video. That's a major commitment. It's a long time. It's about an hour. Might as well subscribe. Or if you want to see other videos, click here and here. We'll see you next time.